Viva la France, as we say bonjour to Golf Channel contributor Ron Syrak. Ron, sorry, I couldn't resist. I mean, up until a couple of weeks ago, the LPGA season was defined by who wasn't winning, the likes of Lydia Ko, Nelly Cordera, among others. Now, Boutier has now won three times this season. Should she be the current favourite for LPGA Player of the Year? Yeah, we spent seven months waiting for somebody to step forward and claim this year as theirs, say, hey, I'm the best player out here this year. I don't think many of us thought that it was going to be Celine Boutier, but she's clearly done that with three wins, two in a row, one of them a major championship, uh, and still plenty of time to turn a really, really good year into a spectacular year. I say she has one hand firmly on that uh, Player of the Year trophy. Well, as I mentioned, Aria Jutanagan was the last player to win three consecutive events. That was back in 2016. Also, Jin Yun Ko as well. She won three times in four events at the end of 2021. But what were three straight wins, two of them being major championship means for Boutier and really, in fact, any player on the LPGA Tour? Yeah, it would make this more than a career year. It would be the kind of year that people are going to talk about for years to come. Uh, you know, you talk about winning two majors in the same season. Uh, you're in a category with Annika Sorensen, Kari Webb, Inby Park. Doesn't happen all that often. It would take Celine from being a star to being a superstar. It, 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 would, it would truly be that kind of breakout performance for her. It has just been an absolute remarkable stretch, Ron. And of course, looking at this week, the AIG Women's Open gets underway on Thursday. Now, this has been a major championship with sort of some quite shocking winners. In fact, since becoming a major back in 2001, seven players have earned their first career LPGA title at this event. What is it that generates these surprise champions, do you think? I think a big part of it has to do with the nature of Lynx golf, the bounces, the bunkers, the uh, the bad breaks, the weather, the role that fortune plays in the outcome. Uh, I think sometimes players with lower expectation levels uh, aren't as hard on themselves and they roll with the punches easier and uh, and, and and they they have that resiliency that they weren't expecting to have. They all of a sudden find themselves in a position with a chance to win on Sunday and they get the job done. But it, it, it's all those elements that are involved in Lynx golf that we don't see anywhere else that test that, that resiliency, that mental toughness of players. Yeah, that's a really good point, Ron. And another trend that we're seeing in majors, and I just think this is fascinating, we've had 21 different players who have won the last 22 majors. It's just kind of insane. Is that a lack of dominance, do you think, on the LPGA Tour? Just a sign of the depth that we've got right now in the women's game. You know, I think it's a wee bit of both, but, uh, uh, you know, to, to go deeper into the numbers here, uh, of the last 14 major championships, only one of the winners has been from Korea. That's after 19 of the previous 39 majors were won by players from Korea. Uh, of the last 18 major winners have come from 10 different countries. I think that the depth of talent is unprecedented in women's golf right now. And we are seeing the influx of talent on such a level that people are coming from out of nowhere. And we've been seeing this for a while on the men's side, but in the women's side, it's been rare until the last few years for players outside the top 30, outside the top 40 to win. But uh, I, I think right now we're just seeing how, how deep the talent pool is. Yeah, it's such a global tour, and that is definitely something to be celebrated. And finally, Ron, first time the women are taking on Walton Heath. Give us your favourite this week, and there may be a little dark horse as well. I, you know, my favourite, I'm going to go with Nelly Corda, even though she's still number one in the Rolex rankings. It's been a little bit of a disappointing season for her. This is a chance for her to go out there and... and, and reclaim her identity, Re say, hey, don't forget about me. It's a good springboard for her into Solheim Cup. We know how much she loves that. And for somebody that we're not thinking of, uh, you know, she's a big name. She's a, she's a, one of the top players out there. But don't be surprised if Nasa Hataoka can, makes it a clean sweep this year of all five majors being first-time major championship winners. Yeah, she came so close at Pebble Beach. It was such an exciting final day, Ron. Thank you so much, as always, for your time, and we will see you very soon. Talk to you down the road, my friend.